I'm Frank Halliday and today I want to take you on a magical journey into watercolours. But before we start our journey, we need to know what equipment we're going to use. So I thought what I'd do is talk about the palette I use and the brushes I use and see where we go from there. The palette you can see is a rectangular palette with spaces for 14 colours round there. The range of brushes I'll be using today are called set to gold. These are a, a range of uh, sable and synthetic blend. The sable absorbs the water and the synthetic gives you a nice point. My water pots, as you can see, are two really large pots of the Chinese lantern type. In landscape, the first thing we all need to do is skies. There's our three colours for the, for the sky. We've got the raw sienna, we've got the French ultramarine, and we've got the mix of French ultramarine and burnt umber. We're ready for our sky. And of course, the first thing we need to do with a sky of this type is wet certain areas of the paper. In this case, I'm wetting the central area, then dipping in the raw sienna, introducing this colour into there, washing the brush out, picking up the French ultramarine, and some of the dry areas are running into the, into the mix of raw sienna. Leave some little bits for white clouds. Introduce just a touch of alizarin. Just a touch, not too much. And of course this colour you can use for tucking up into the clouds and things like that. You can get beautiful clouds made with this. Absolutely lovely. And of course, now we've got that on, we've still got plenty of time to introduce our clouds. That is the burnt umber and the French ultramarine, remember? That's the mix, and it's quite a strong mix, this. So we can drop in one or two dark clouds, real angry clouds in there. This makes it a really heavy sky. And of course, what you need to do is, if you've got a sky, don't fiddle with it. Leave it be and let it work. Once you've got your sky, say, right, that's it, leave it. Our sky is now completely dry. So what I want to do now is using the existing colours that we've got on the palette, let's indicate a little bit of distance and put a bit of landscape in. And I'm using the, the cloud cover we had and just indicate by, I'm using one of the flat brushes just to put in a touch of distance. It can be distant trees, distant hills, distant hedgerows, whatever. It's just giving a touch of depth to your picture. And then as we come further forward, we can increase the colour using the raw sienna we first started with, and a touch of the French ultramarine, and we get a nice blue, a bluey green. What I want to show you now is a heavy laden sky. And for this, I'm going to mix raw sienna and a mixture of the French ultramarine and burnt umber to make a nice grey. And those two colours we can make ourselves quite a heavy sky there. Right with clean water and a large, the largest brush you've got, clean over the, wipe over the whole page. So we're going into a wet in wet type of sky this time. In with our touch of raw sienna, in bands across the sky. Then we're still all wet of course, we can use our heavy colour, here goes in our darks. You know it's going to rain when you get a sky like this. Heavy laden skies. Get yourself a little tissue. Lift out some of these colours in the bottom. And when you get to that stage, of course, leave it. Because there's more skies ruined through fiddling than leaving them alone. We've left it to dry, the sky area. Now we can put in a little bit, little bit of landscape, nothing, nothing too 
too detailed. Just want to get in some, some light in this bottom, just to finish off our landscape. Probably a heavy sky, but a touch of sunlight in there as well, just catching it with perhaps distant, one or two distant marks and hills and shapes, just to give it a touch of ominous foreboding for the coming storm. And that's the end of the story. Forget it, leave it. <laughs> <laughs>